Whoa, everybody, listen to that. Let's just listen for a second. All these birds are happy. Sun is shining. You know what that means? That means it's springtime, and that means green stuff is coming. Before it does, I wanted to pop this video out. Y'all, compost. Let's talk about compost. Compost is, I think, one of the top top main things that we should be talking about as growers as edible landscapers as as just general landscapers compost is a a powerhouse of potential to be able to transform our our soils into food growing beauty growing flower growing i mean any kind of plant tree growing orchard you know all that stuff all the wonderful fruits and and berries and things that we love come from the soil and compost is a key key factor to creating soil that is going to foster that kind of life. Back behind me here, we have my pile of compost, which is mostly green waste compost, is what it's called. Um, it is mostly composed of leaves, needles, twigs from uh, you know trees and bushes, and they ground all that up, and then they composted it with sand and uh, soil for about a year and a half to to two years. So that's been breaking down for a while, but it still has quite a few chunks in it. Before I get into any more details, let's go over the top six types of compost that you'll be encountering and can you potentially create yourself or buy and use. Right here I did a no-dig garden where I had, first of all, cardboard and then mushroom compost, which we'll talk about more, and then uh, the green waste compost, and then I have wood chips as the pathways. After this video, I'll be doing some uh, other videos on the pros and cons of these different types of compost because uh, I want to help you guys know what you're getting into whenever you're trying to think about what kind of compost do I want to get, what kind of compost can I make with like, my kitchen scraps or other material you might have around your farm or garden or, or just yard. So here we go, let's get into these composts. Okay, type number one is manure, manure compost. We're talking cow manure, horse manure, chicken manure, all those good old uh, animals popping stuff out. We want to make sure and use the type that's best. So we're talking manure that has been gathered and then has been a, had a, a time to be able to compost down, break down, and turn into more like soil. It's not, it's not fresh. We don't want to get fresh manure compost. It's not even compost yet, it's just manure. Manure that has had time I like to give it at least a year to try to get some of those, you know, whatever the animal is eating, have those work out of the system of the soil and let them break down. Also, it's good to add manure to like wood chips or another source of organic material so that that, uh, that balance can happen between the nitrogen and carbon and the microbes can just really be happier that way breaking it down. We also have vermicomposting, worm manure basically. I mean, worms eat stuff and then they, you know, excrete whatever they didn't, uh, you know, digest. And that's what's called worm castings. That is basically worm poo that is extremely awesome for your garden. And um, actually, most soil has it going on because if it has worms in it, then it's, it's producing that. But Worm composting can be intensified by getting worms, putting them in bins or in mounds, keeping them the right temperature and giving them the right food and all of a sudden you have a factory producing incredible, incredible soil. That is honestly one of my top favorites just because of the potency of that soil and how well it helps plants grow. It's just super balanced and the worms really do a good job of working with the whatever existing soil you have and turning it into wonderful uh, nutrient dense rich awesome awesome compost so that's worm composting in type number three it would be green manures this is essentially where let's say i have a garden up here um, i have finished my harvest and then for the fall i might plant some winter rye winter vetch and some uh, winter wheat something like that and then I'll let it grow up a little bit in the fall and then in early spring it'll shoot off because it has that establishment already. And it, I mean, one time I did it and it grew like this tall, really tall. And then, and then you crimp it or cut it down and that falls down and that creates a compost or the otherwise known as a green manure 
that builds the soil and it's just a way of bringing in added benefits of organic matter and nutrients to your your soil without having to harvest you know pull those nutrients off you're letting them lay down and compost on the top of the soil so that's number three number four is direct composting this is super super easy I have a video I'll pop it up on the top uh, let's see probably top right corner and you can look at that yeah direct composting essentially that's where you come in you have usually kitchen scraps or or you know scraps from your garden or whatever something like that you come in and you just dig a hole it's really easy when you have wood chips or a no dig garden you don't have to really dig you're just pulling stuff to the side pull it to the side bury whatever you have there cover it up and let all the microbes and soil life do all the work to break it down right there where it's at so that was number four let's think about this number five and six these are how do I say this these are um, commonly misunderstood types of composting that I would love to get to be able to bring some clarity on these because I just hear so many people ask what is composting how can I make a compost bin all these questions and um, a lot of the times the questions can be answered just by knowing the difference between these two types of compost and this is thermal and passive composting essentially hot or cold composting so this is how it works y'all ready for this I think it's gonna help some of us understand have a framework of understanding what compost is and, and the different types so the two primary categories for composting if it's not composting using animal manures or worms is thermal or passive composting so you have thermal composting is a composting that involves heat it's quite a bit of heat we have temperatures you have to be at least 113 degrees Fahrenheit to 160 and that gets hot because what you do is you're adding a lot of brown and uh, brown materials and green materials as well as manure you bring it all in together at one time and all of a sudden all these microbes these bacteria the protozoa uh, fungi mostly bacteria at first are like whoa look at all this food they come in they start breaking down those those uh, carbon particles and and you know all kinds of whatever you're putting in there whether it's grass clippings or or chips or whatever it is um, the bacteria really starts to come in and break it down and bacteria just like us have a uh, metabolism so that means it's going to warm up so the soil or the compost warms that warms up and then you get it up to that those temperatures to where I mean it'll get hot enough to where it'll actually break down and uh, terminate or destroy weed seeds or bacteria or even viruses that you don't want in the soil so there's there's some serious benefits to this kind of you know composting but the other side of the story is cold composting or passive composting and that's what most of us are familiar with you know you'll have a you'll have a, a little bin area and you, you slowly add in compost or you know kitchen scraps or whatever you have um, into that cold compost area and that means I mean that's kind of what I have over here even though it's mostly um, green waste um, compost over there but you, you have a, a situation where it's not ever getting above 90 degrees it's, it's below 90 degrees so uh, what you get with that is there's some benefits of course and some downsides cold composting generally takes between six months to a year depending on what time of year it is the warmer it is in the year the faster composting is going to happen um, but then the, the the thermal composting can actually happen within um, eight weeks so pretty quick of course you're turning it every two three days um, depending on the circumstances there's some really cool science out there um, but actually when I was in Africa and Zimbabwe with these folks called uh, foundations for farming some really really awesome organization over there they uh, taught me how to make thermal composting and we did a big old pile it was like a, a group effort we all came together and we were like singing while we were doing it and making some really um, really a big pile of, of compost but that one compost pile uh, the the theme that they were using is that one pile would actually provide the the fertilizer for one whole family 
um, which is a really powerful com concept because that means that family doesn't have to go out and buy you know synthetic fertilizers which are prone to erosion prone to uh, volatilization you know going leaving in the air um, basically with this compost you know concept we have a organic organic natural uh, more stable type of fertilizer that's not only going to add nutrients but it's going to add nutrients this year the year following and it just has this this extensive um, extended benefit to where it's adding nutrients more than just one time as well as it adds organic matter so there's just all kinds of awesome benefits to composting and thermal composting can be a great asset but cold composting can too so there's some serious benefits and not so good benefits to each type of composting and I would love to be able to share some of those pros and cons with you guys um, in the next few videos so stay tuned we're gonna be doing some more videos on this kind of cool stuff composting y'all this is cool this is such fun stuff because think about it we're turning our waste into powerful powerful um, potential for you know growth and, and and beauty down the road so I mean we're talking about recycling at its finest stay tuned we got some fun stuff coming let's see about this let's see we have essentially six types that we talked about we have number one being manures different types of animal animal manures that are composted down those are great stuff and then and actually mushroom compost by the way that I used here came from primarily horse manure uh, you know from from different uh, staple stables and then they use that to grow the mushrooms and then once the mushrooms are done we have this soil so that's kind of where that came from and then also we have uh, green waste or green manures that's where you're growing you're growing a crop cutting it down laying it on the ground and that top layer of organic matter and and good uh, material is going to be breaking down helping the soil and then we also have direct composting so essentially you dig a hole put the plant or the compost in there and cover it back up and then we also have thermal and cold or passive composting which we already talked about and I feel like there's one more um, let's see dun, 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 dun. Aha! I remember worms worm composting vermicomposting there's also some other really fun ideas or ways to composting they kind of fit into the same categories we've already talked about but you have um, tumbler or bin composting where you have a bin you turn it and it's kind of kind of like warm compost composting basically you know it's not quite thermal it's not quite get that hot but it does stay warmer and therefore it's going to break down faster uh, you have you also have emo composting which is basically you you get a bin and you put all your scraps in there and then you close it up don't let any air into it and that's going to mean that it breaks down mostly from bacteria and can be a little faster and it doesn't smell bad so it's it's a good solution for like folks who live in the city and can't really have something outside so there's all kinds of really really awesome types of composting and I would love to dive deep into those uh, but this video is basically an overview of the different types y'all thanks for watching the garden guy channel stay tuned tomorrow I'll be posting a video on the different pros and cons for some of the different types of composting and y'all we're gonna figure out what you guys can use for your specific needs what's gonna be best and we're gonna get there together y'all good stuff keep sewing and growing see you next time on the garden guard channel